All right, guys, welcome to the Pallet Flipping uh, Wholesale Liquidation Podcast. Uh, we'll call it that. And uh, I have my guest here, Aiden. He's one of my students in my small group. And um, he has hit me up a number of different times about different items that he has in bulk. One time it was, it was, it was anything from like jackets to uh, to overstock from... Um, it was uh, Lowe's, I think, one time. Yep, and, yeah, yeah. Um, it just started, yeah, it started piquing my interest because, you know, when it comes to flipping stuff locally, there's only so much, there's only so many used items that can be posted on any given day. And if you run out of those items or you can't have enough of those items to flip, well, then you got to have some sort of steady uh, juice here. And so not everyone in every city is able to like, you know, just, hook that up every single day. And it can, one of the negatives of flipping is that you can wake up one day and make a thousand dollars or $2,000 or $500, whatever is a good number for you. And you can do that three, four days in a row. And then you could hit a few days where you just are not finding any good deals at all. And um, day by day, it can be such a roller coaster. And so anyway, for my own sake and for y'all's sake, I want to have more resources for us to, basically to lock in more deals. Um, when it comes to phone flipping, it's the same thing. And I know a guy who buys uh, office phones by the truckload. And he's like, yeah, man, if you knew how to do what I'm doing, you would never, ever, ever worry about getting enough phones again. And of course, like he would probably teach me for like 50 grand, but I never hit him up on it. Anyway, um, let's get to it. Aiden, how you doing, man? Good. How y'all? Good, good. Real quick. Uh, hang on. I like, I pinned myself. Okay. It's weird. If I'm not pinned, then like, we're just staring at you. The whole, it looks like we're just like staring at you the whole time, but oh, okay. if you're the guest. It's all good. Um, Aiden, how did you get into this business? So we started it, uh, it's probably close to five, six years ago now. Um, one of my buddies told me about this pallet warehouse down in florida that uh they just sell pallets of stuff from home depot lowe's walmart um you just buy them at a highly discounted rate break it down test everything you flip it you make a little bit of a profit okay uh, that's kind of how i found out about this industry um so we ended up every weekend we go down to florida um pull up whatever money we had made spend it all there and bring it back home and break everything down, test it, post it on Marketplace. I believe this was kind of in the early days of Marketplace. Um, it used to be so good, dude. It used to be so good. It's oh, yeah. still good. You were uh, be really good. the only people out there. There wasn't too much competition. Right, right. Yeah. And it was, they didn't have shipping, and so it was all local. Yep. Um, it didn't be outranked by somebody like trying to promote a post. There was none of that. Yeah. Okay. So now, when you first started ads and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you you're working a job, you're scrounging together enough money to buy a pallet or two, and y'all are just putting it up on just like a basic utility trailer, or how do you get it down there? Are they shipping it to so you? We would actually I had a work truck with the uh the job I was at, so that was free. It wasn't really supposed to be using it, but uh we put stuff in the back of that and then I'd pick up a U Haul oh. trailer uh the morning of or the night before we go to leave. We try and get it down there on Saturday mornings. Try and get there about five in the morning or so. Okay. So usually I'd like to pick it up, uh the U Haul trailer. It cost me thirty bucks. Gas was paid for by my company. They didn't really know. But uh so I would uh haul that down to Florida. Just about a two hour drive there, two hour <laughs> drive back. All right, so you're making a four-hour round trip, and how many pallets are you picking up each time you go? Uh, the first time, I don't think we got any pallets because we didn't really know how it worked. We got it in there a little late. Everything was sold out by the time we, we were able to get in. We were at the back of the line. But uh, next time, we, we kind of learned, you know, get there a little early. I think we picked up probably two pallets. And then next time, we probably doubled up, picked up four or five, and then – it was just getting to the point you were having to strategize how how are you going to fill this trailer and your truck up for this whole drive back right right how are you not going to like blow the tires out because you're yeah. so loaded down yeah 
Right. And then, so we did that, uh, I'd say for probably about a year and then kind of realized the whole time there's no one in between Atlanta and Jacksonville where we were going, uh, that's doing the pallets. So we kind of took a shot in the dark, um, bought a truckload of, I think it was Lowe's at the time from the guy down in Florida and started selling actual pallets out of our warehouse that we were using. Uh, okay. Wait, let's back up. How much did you pay for just one pallet? Ooh, that's a good question. It was so long ago, but, uh, probably say, I think they were Walmart pallets we were buying. Um, so anywhere in the neighborhood of about two to $300 a pallet. And what were you able to turn that around for? Uh, normally we'd be able to almost double our money or double it up. But you're so having we turn, a you know, $200. Mm -hmm. And then you're making only 200 bucks. I mean, I guess that's, yeah. that was like well, a, so, that was yeah. a light bulb you needed. Yeah. To yeah. Keep going. yeah. So we, uh, we kind of just tried to get as much inventory as we could every time. So just make the trip more profitable every time we went down there. Okay. And our real only overhead was the U-Haul trailer. We used a section of my buddy's uh, family's warehouse that they weren't using. Okay. Uh, just to store stuff. And then you just keep some stuff at the house. Um, okay. Yeah, that was about it. It wasn't a ton of profit until we started, you know, picking up four or five pallets at a time. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first time you do a deal, I always try to tell people, look, don't spend a lot of money. You don't yep. need to worry about how much you make. You need to worry about like, is this something you actually want to continue doing? And is there a scalability factor that's going to make sense for you? Um, exactly. Yeah. And if you're, if you're using company gas and truck, you yeah. psychopath, you, uh, yeah, you're, you're on a, you're on a, you're running a, um, a leaner business than, than most people. Um, yep. And you're learning enough from there to know, okay, well, let's say I'm not robbing my company uh like how much is it going to cost for me to have my own truck <laughs> right right all but, right uh, yeah it was it was pretty good um but you kind of have to take the good with bad there's some pallets we'd got that were just complete duds nothing worked on them you just kind of had to cut your losses and make up what you could on the others because at the end of the day it's all uh, it's all return stuff at the store stuff they don't want um but you can't get a lot of overstock here and there but uh yeah, that's the main thing. It's they are returned, so you're gonna have to test everything, be handy with it, fix it if it's broke if you can. Um, so I learned a lot of stuff there. Well, okay, yeah, you got me thinking. I've got I've got help waiting for this. If uh, and they don't know it yet. Um, I got a friend that would just love this thing. He would he'd eat it up. All right, so the first palace that y'all did were like electronics or uh, like like lawn equipment or what, what was it? It was mainly household stuff, so uh, we had a couple freezers, uh, blenders, you know, kitchen appliances that we, we kind of figured would go well. Okay. Uh, so stuff like that, and then we, we kind of ventured off into uh, home improvement a little bit. So okay. that always went well. We, I mean, everyone loves tools, so we try to get our hands on those as much as we can, but those also came at a higher price. Okay. Yeah, so I'm assuming you you just balance out like uh you know maybe something that's medium competitive. Yeah, uh, you yeah. Kind of figure We're, it out as you go. Yeah, what sells the best for you? I mean, it's it's just different for everyone for some reason. Um, right. We're all using the same marketplace and eBay, or eBay, Craigslist. Right. We're all using the same thing, but just some stuff sells better for other people. Um, so for us, you know household stuff uh countertop appliances regular appliances and like tools flew off the shelves for us sure so how do you like yeah like you couldn't mail me one pallet if the pallet costs 200 and then the shipping is 500 right so that's yeah. that's a problem so you almost have to find someone close by you maybe unless yeah. you're gonna buy yeah. a whole truck yourself right so there's, there's a ton of these pallet places across the country. Um, you just kind of have to figure out, you know, who's closest by you, who has the better stuff. Uh, you just kind of have to go feel it out for a little bit. Um, so I always tell people, don't go to one place and throw all your eggs in one basket. You know, shop around a little bit. Right. Everyone has different, um, different kind of inventory, different conditions, because 
for for example, uh, Home Depot, they have four four main facilities that they ship out from. Yeah, each one handles their stuff a little bit different. One may have a little bit more higher damage rate than the other, so it all depends on where this pallet place is located, where they're pulling from. Yeah, what kind yeah. of inventory they're getting in. That's why I tell everyone feel it out. Please don't send anybody money without seeing it first. That's a that's a big thing. People will get scammed left and right just wiring people money, never seeing it, never meeting with these people. Right. So I tell everyone if you're if you're trying to do it, go see these people in, in person first. Your three hundred dollar plane ticket is going to be well worth it than getting scammed out of eight hundred dollars and never seeing anything. Uh, okay. So like actually yeah. fly out there. Damn. Okay. Yeah, if you fly out there or, or make the drive, you know wherever they're at. Right. Okay. But so, you're, uh, you're scaling up a pretty good bit. Like we we supply a good couple stores, uh, and some I've shipped out to people in Canada before, stuff like that. So there's people all over. Um, my next question is, um, so you went from two to four pallets to whatever, and what is twenty six pallets on a truckload? Is that right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's about the standard. Is about twenty four to twenty six. And you get those all delivered to your twelve thousand square foot warehouse, right? Yep. Um And so now you're basically you're the guy that's listing a pallet for three hundred twenty five dollars or whatever on Facebook Marketplace, and somebody's come yeah. and get it and do what you used to do. Is that right? Yeah. So we we did do the we sold the pallets there for a little bit, um, and then we decided to get out of it because um, we started doing online auctions. And we just saw a bit higher. Um, uh, we pull in a lot more money per item than uh, what we were getting it for the pallets. The pallets were nice. We could push a lot of volume. But then as we grew, our overhead grew and it just margins were getting a little bit too thin. So we decided yeah. to kind of cut losses with that. Um, it's probably about a year and a half, two years ago, almost. Okay. And just started online auctions. But uh yeah, online we did sell the pallets like, uh, for about three years. Okay. But like online auctions, like you mean you're selling your stuff on eBay or you mean like you have your own website? Uh, so so at, we did grow a pretty good uh, following on Facebook. We had about 20,000 people um, on our Facebook page. So uh, we ended up making, there is a bunch of bidding websites like High Bid and stuff like that. But we ended yeah. up going another route. We just made our own website, paid for someone to... Uh, kind of build the auction base for it and so we just have all of our local people go straight to our website bid on it from there and then come pick it up gotcha okay so, yeah uh, same process i'm still buying the same inventory i'm just pretty much going back to where we began at breaking down these pallets testing everything and then selling it item by item how much uh how much does warehouse space cost where you're at in Savannah, we are usually around two to 250 a square foot. Oh, that's so, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. It's up there. We got a good bit of warehouses here because we're a huge port city. Um, that's wait, wait. That's, uh, uh, get is that per, wait, is that per month or per year? Per month. Oh, snap. So you're paying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have 12,000 square feet times 2.5? Oh, we kind of got lucky. Uh, my, that's 30 uh, grand a month dude are you serious 30 we, uh, well uh my buddy his family owns the warehouse we're in now so we got kind of lucky there okay but the last one the last warehouse we were at we got a uh the guy was trying to sell it so he just put us in there at a ridiculously low rate we were paying about ten thousand uh ten thousand dollars a month for about twenty five thousand square feet okay so, yeah that was a bigger one to talk about yeah, but uh, normally your warehouse space is going to cost you about two dollars to two dollars and fifty cent a square foot per month, so it can get very pricey. Dude, that sounds outrageous. My wife just looked at a thousand square feet commercial space for an office the other day, and it was a dollar twenty a foot, and that's like office space. Maybe it's because Baton Rouge sucks, you know? So it's like one of the perks. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, we're just in a huge port city, so warehouse space is it's I see. it's it's getting snatched up left and right. So they're getting as much as they can for it. Dude, you know you already know what the play is then. Yep, Our but uh, that's another reason why we kind of wanted to get out of 
selling the pallets is because our overhead was about to jump up another 20 grand a month. Why is that? Because uh, the warehouse we were in ended up getting sold and we had about a year left in there on our lease. So we're, we're going to have to find another space uh, about the same size, but our uh, overhead was going to double. Got it. Got it. Sounds like uh, building, it sounds like getting land and building your own warehouse would be the play, huh? We, we definitely considered it, um, but uh, just ended up going the auction route and um, just selling stuff item by item. Okay. Dude, that's wild. That's 30, that's 30 bucks a year square foot. That's, that's like prime time stuff over here. I mean, you'd have to like, you'd have to, you'd have to beg them to charge you more or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, okay. yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. But we were we were pulling in uh, some crazy sales, moving a lot of stuff. We were doing about ten to fifteen truckloads a week, just balls to the walls, just selling like crazy. What is a truckload cost? I say an depends average. Depends on what it. Um, I'd say for us, on average, is about seven to eight thousand a truck. But we've we've bought some as high as fifty thousand, and some as low as four hundred dollars. So it can it definitely ranges a whole bunch just depending on what kind of product you want um, and kind of what sells best for you. So some people they like high piece count stuff. Like have you ever heard of like bin stores? Mm -hmm. You go in there, you know, one everything is priced like five bucks one day, four bucks the next. Yep. Those are typically the uh, the pricier loads, but you're getting about twenty thirty thousand items. You're paying on average about a dollar fifty two dollars per item. So that wow. can uh that can definitely get up oh. there. Us, we like the lower piece count, higher retail stuff. It's just right. easy flips. We're turning and burning them. I don't really want to deal with anything that retails for five bucks and try and scrounge up what I can from it. But the bin stores, they eat that stuff up. Um, like I just showed you that appliance load we got the other day. Those yeah. usually run about twenty to twenty five thousand. Um. And what does that what does that uh, get you? You know, what do you what do you end up moving all that for? So, Basically double. We, uh, so we get it for about twenty seven percent of retail, um, and then we'll typically sell it for about forty to fifty. So, okay, all right. Yeah, so we'll net we'll net after everything, uh, usually about ten to fifteen thousand after you know discount, you know whatever's left on the floor, this that and the other. Okay. So, uh, how many? Yeah, how there's, many a, there's a ton of different ways you can go about it. So okay, so if I want to order uh, a whole truck, just one truck, mm -hmm. um, how much square footage do I need? Uh, I'd say typically about two thousand. So you're you're pretty comfortable. You can spread everything out. Um, so not not everything's crammed in there. These pallets are usually about forty by forty eight inches um so yeah, little size yeah yeah and then you got about 12 on each double stack them you got about 12 on each side okay so to give yourself double a little stack, bit of space mean like shelving? if you're, if you're a, a buying a truckload I'd, I'd definitely say about 2,000 square feet just to give yourself some room to be comfortable with a bunch of stuff now are you saying 2,000 with it double stacked like you have shelving and you're you have a forklift or something like what's up yeah that's that definitely helps. Um, if you have pallet racking, you could definitely get away with some less space. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd typically say about two thousand square feet. Just, just you have plenty of room. Uh, a forklift is definitely. That was honestly one of the first things we bought whenever we started selling the pallets. That was our first investment was a forklift. Cost us, I think our first one we bought for six thousand dollars. So, not crazy expensive, but. Uh, definitely well worth it yeah 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 definitely not cheap either mm -hmm. okay so 2000 square foot warehouse let's call that uh i mean that'd be five grand a month so you'd have to get rocking and rolling so you almost yeah. like for 99 percent of the population you wouldn't want to go straight into that you'd want to start doing some pallets first and just kind of go yeah. low-key you could do pallets out of almost anywhere right yeah. you could do a pallet or two out of your house i'm assuming yeah yeah i mean like i said we we took it back to uh like i took First one's back to just my house. You know, I just kept everything there. Um, yeah. And then we started picking up, you know, three to five pallets at a time. We just, uh, that warehouse we're in now, 
it was uh, full of all their his family stuff. So uh, okay. uh, they just had a little corner that they weren't using. So we just kind of stuffed it up in there. A little small 12,000 square foot yeah. corner. But uh, you got me thinking, definitely, though. You can definitely scale it up pretty easy. And then um, once you kind of build a following or kind of figure out what sells the best and selling good, um, you can scale up from there pretty easy. What is your favorite uh, ballot at this point or your favorite uh, type item? Is it the appliances? Can be. They're pretty exciting, but I like doing uh, e-com a lot. It's easy. I don't have to deal with anyone really. I just throw it in a shipping box and ship it out. Is ecom something that anyone can do, or is it more something that you like really figured out how to do? You know what I'm saying? Um, anyone can really do it. It's definitely finding the product is the key. Um, just kind of have to figure out who's got it. The newest, the, if you get stuff overstock, brand new, that's the best. Um, Typically comes at a higher price tag, but easier to move. You don't have to deal with your customer getting it saying, oh, well, this is broken. Something's wrong with here. There's a scratch on it. Right, right. Just ship it there. Ease of mind. It's done. Uh, yeah. And with Amazon, Amazon's kind of my favorite, but uh, eBay is definitely the best for uh, if you have a used item, something like that. They're pretty uh, easy with it. You can talk with your, your customer pretty easy versus amazon is just pretty closed off um customers typically don't ask you questions about it right they don't see that if you mark it as used half the time they're not even going to notice it they're just seeing a cheaper price they're going to return it then you're out ebay fees shipping fees stuff like that or amazon fees I should say. yeah that's what i hate about amazon like they yep. they they're doing the shipping and then they'll the buyer will say it arrived too late and then yep. they take your money. It's like, dude, I didn't ship it. I'm paying you dickheads to do this for me. Yeah, it's, it's definitely happened before. Um, but they can um they can they can push some volume. I'll say that. Um we've had uh had some crazy stuff come through. Um that I'll just I'll have a shipment come in. I don't know what's on it until it shows up, and then I uh, I have ten pallets of overstock stuff. I'll list it on Amazon. It's gone in a week. So that was always the plus of, of Amazon, but eBay is typically a lot easier to deal with. Yeah. It's a lot more so user friendly. You sell a lot on uh, Amazon currently? Uh, Not right now. We've kind of shifted our focus towards uh, appliances and doing more in person sales, but uh, I do still have some stuff on there. Okay. We have uh, probably got 1,500 units just sitting at an Amazon warehouse right now. I'll typically sell about 10 or 15 of them a day. So I just have some background stuff going on with them. Nothing super crazy. Okay. So, all right. So an average person wants to start flipping some pallets. Uh, they need to find someone in their local area. They need to yep. go check them out in person. And, yep. and there's, a, there's a ton of Facebook groups right? to try and find these people. So if you look at uh, liquidation truckloads on Facebook, pallet flipping, stuff like that, there's these massive groups that there's all these brokers and pallet stores in there that you just put up a post, say, hey, I'm in, say, Savannah, Georgia. They'll say, hey, I'm over here in Jacksonville or in Atlanta, somewhere like that. Right. And you'll be able to kind of find them from there. That, that'd be the easiest way to find these people. And I always okay. tell everyone, Go check them out in person before you start a relationship with them, and you don't typically have to go see them anymore. You just say, "Hey, send me send me a few pallets of this or that." Right. But uh, before you get there, definitely go check them out in person. Build up a, a personal relationship with them um, before you start doing any of that. Got it. Got it. Um, because we've gotten to the point where, like I said, our first truckload we bought, we were dealing with uh, these people for. Close to a year, so I felt pretty comfortable, you know, wiring them just some money and yeah, my stuff goes up. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that at some point trust is big time. Um, yeah, yeah, because there is there's a ton of shady people in this industry, so you just kind of have to do your due diligence and um, kind of sniff out who is who's kind of legit, who's yeah, pretty much shady. Dude, I think I'm gonna do this, man. Um, 
I don't know why I haven't in the past. I, I think I have some sort of uh disease, but like I think <clears throat> I've I've held off on a lot of uh in-person stuff because I have moved around so much for the last 10 years. And all of my early, earlier success in business was all online. Yeah, an Amazon yep. store, eBay store. Uh just it's been like strictly virtual. And even even doing phones. I've even figured out how to make that like not involve me meeting yeah. people. Um, it's definitely it's definitely nice because you you can really pick your own hours. You're not committed to you know being at this place for such amount of time, but uh, it's definitely a good avenue for some more revenue that you're kind of you're not getting at the moment. And you can always hire out someone for you know ten fifteen bucks an hour. Hey, sit at the store, check these people out. Right. Right. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, we ended up, uh, when we first started, it was just us because we were just trying to save as much money as we can, scale up as fast as possible right. to keep up with these big people, you know, selling 10, 15 truckloads a week. We were just a little small fry, you know, just doing some here and there. But uh, yeah. ended up hiring a couple people um, to where we honestly didn't have to be there anymore it did take a chunk out of you know what we were making but at that point we'd scaled up so much that it's just the cost of doing business and it didn't really affect us too much yeah man so what phase are y'all in are y'all in uh, are y'all coasting and you're just kind of maintaining a, a good income without stressing out too much or are you guys just really definitely stay we're maintaining but uh i mean we're still investing as much as we can into it while you know still keeping a comfortable lifestyle we have employees at the at the warehouse, but I'm still there. But I have the option, you know, hey, I'm going to dip out for a week, go on vacation. I don't really have too much to be worried about. But we're still scaling up as much as we can. Um, like I said, we moved back to the smaller warehouse, and we started getting into home improvement pretty heavy. We got some flooring contracts, uh, appliances, stuff like that. So that may open up an avenue to, you know, get another warehouse and then I'm a building supply and stuff like that. So there's said, always different avenues that this liquidation has sort of taken us to that. I never really realized it could have. Cause right now I'm selling yeah, our main like thing that. is flooring. I'm selling thousands of square foot of flooring a week. That I knew nothing about flooring, you know, a couple years ago. And now I have these big manufacturers that I'm a, I'm my uh, distri distributor for them. And I just, I make a call. I'm like, hey, I need so-and-so square foot to deliver to this address. And it's just done. It's freaking amazing, man. Uh, yep. This is changing my life right now, I swear. Because uh, with liquidation, there's, yeah. you're seeing product of all kinds. So it can take you in a crazy amount of directions. You can do electronics, bin stores, uh flea market people that's another good way to kind of scale up without having to commit to you know getting a warehouse take all your stuff to a flea market there's your storefront right there i got a lot of people yeah. that do that still like they actually sell it from a flea market is that what you're saying not the pallets themselves but they'll break down the items you know they'll, they'll have their own little stand full of okay. whatever they're getting well i like i would be most interested in in the buy a pallet and then resell it on marketplace and yep. then seeing where that takes me. That would kind of be, you know, for example, there's somebody locally that, uh, hang on. It says going out of business, new shoes by the pallets. So I don't know if they're still in yep. business anymore or they bought this from stores going out of business. Um, it could go so either way, but that's another good thing is, uh, close out. You can always chase those because, you're getting this stuff at crazy low, crazy low prices. And you just, you load up on it and same sort of concept. You just bring it back, resell it. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and again, it's like you're, you're getting, you're doing what a lot of us are doing, but mm -hmm. you have basically unlimited amounts of stuff without having to meet someone on the front end. Yeah. Like having to meet so someone just, on the front end kinda... and the back end to, to resell a lot of this stuff. Mm hmm. And we're doing it one by one too, not like a bunch, you know. Yeah, but it's it's definitely taking a while to get there. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's just 
I just I call or email up a whatever sales rep we're getting stuff from. It's shipped in in the next couple of days. We unload it and then it's going from there. Okay. Um. Anybody have any questions for Aiden? With appliances, what kind of appliances are you talking about? Refrigerators, stoves, TVs, mm -hmm. or are you talking about smaller appliances like uh, uh, coffee makers? Major appliances, so your fridges, stoves, washers, dryers, uh, and dishwashers, stuff like that. And we'll, so we'll get some smaller Sagan. So you could sell those? You don't have to worry about install or warranty? Nope. Uh, a lot of this stuff, um, I have it shipped from Lowe's and stuff like that. So a lot of this stuff has never been registered online. So I tell my customers, hey, go online, register it. Your warranty is usually still good. Um, I don't install, but I will deliver it for a fee if my customers ask me to. But most of the time, they'll just bring a truck and trailer, load up with it, and they'll do it all themselves. Genius, man. Genius. Yeah. I'm already like one yeah. of the things I like to do before I go into a business is, uh, is think through, you know, yep. what does it look like if I'm doing a lot of it? Mm -hmm. Yep. And man. then the, the smaller appliances are always good too. If you're, if you're just marketplace flipping, people are always eating that up or go to a flea market. They will love it. And they're easy to kind of haul around. You just get a little utility trailer. You're not moving around these four or 500 pound fridges. Right. Right. So you offer, I mean, do you offer uh, delivery for stuff like that or you just have them come pick it up? Yeah, with the fridges, um, like I said, we got into renting out our trailers. So I have a bunch of trailers on hand, trucks. Um, yeah. So I, I have no issue just hauling it over to them. Usually I'll, I'll charge them 50 to 75 bucks. And if they want to dispose of their old fridge, that'd be another 25 bucks. And usually I just set it outside my warehouse and some scrappers can pick it up. Okay. Wait, so you rent out your utility trailer? Uh, so we, do, uh, dump, we do dump trailers. Oh, okay. That one, that one. Got it. Yeah, so you rent out. That's another thing Aiden does is uh, rent out a dump trailer. Would you say yeah. like 75 for a day or something like that? Yep, 275 for a day. Uh, we'll do usually like 500 for a week. I'll cover a ton of weight up at the dump, and then the rest I just – I'll overcharge them 15 bucks per ton if they have anything over. But it's another avenue that this liquidation has taken me. We bought our first dump trailer, you know, trying to cut down on costs. We're like, we'll, we'll haul all of our trash ourselves. Ended up looking on Facebook. People were saying, you can rent these out. And then now I have uh, four trailers, two trucks, and a car hauler. But we typically just use that for ourselves if I'm flipping cars and stuff like that. You doing cars too? <laughs> Yep. Him, uh, the next one is uh I have a motorcycle right now. I started getting into those. Okay. Okay. But uh yeah, car flipping, that's another one. I just had some cash laying around. My buddy does it full time, so he kind of talked me into it and then gave me some pointers, you know, stay away from these cars. These are good. But typically I found sports cars, sports bikes always have sort of a draw where I'm at. So they've been pretty easy flips. Like I got, I just picked up this motorcycle down in Florida for 10,000. I actually have someone on the way in about two hours or so. They'll pick it up for about 12. Yeah, that's solid. Mm -hmm. so it took you what, a couple of days to get it sold? Uh, I've had it for probably about two weeks. It is a higher price bike, but I've been having some fun on it. So I'm not too, no, I'm not too upset for it sitting. Yeah, I mean that's part of the game. Is uh, yeah. you buy it, you buy it from somebody that needs quick cash. You need slow cash. Mm -hmm. Boom. 20%. And this is money that would just be sitting, not doing anything. So I'm not yeah. really too yeah. upset. It sits a couple weeks. It's made me, you know, two grand. That's two grand I, I wouldn't have had. So I'm like you. I'm always always looking for the next thing. You know, make some quick side cash. That's that's what started this whole thing. So, okay. So six figures is, seems like a no brainer for this business, but is, is it possible to make a uh, million dollars in a year doing this or more? Yeah. Yeah. There's uh there's definitely some huge companies that you would never really hear of unless you were in the industry that they have massive contracts with Amazon, um, 
Amazon's probably one of the the bigger companies out there that have they only contracted out to a handful of people. So these huge companies they're snatching them up, pushing out crazy amount of truckloads a day, um, just brokering. And uh, Home Depot is another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Lowe's they have Lowe's it just has one company that handles all of their returns. They're another they're just massive company that started in liquidation i'm not really sure when they did but they've scaled up enough especially brokering wise to uh to make well over a million dollars this is awesome man i appreciate what, you uh, that, coming on sorry go go mitchell what percent of your part of your appliances are deep stuff that one more time you're breaking up what percent of your appliances are defective that you get in? You're getting returns. You get in. So these, so these are. Uh, it's a different program Lowe's has. It's a uh, scratch and dent. Um, so typically none of them, but I've had maybe one or two, um, and they'll usually cover it. Um, they do have some return programs. I typically don't like to deal with them just because it's an extra headache that I really don't have to deal with. If I don't have to, um, I'd rather pay the extra couple percent, but even on the return loads, you're looking at maybe two to three out of the 50 that are, um, defective because with the appliances, they have a, uh, pretty strict return policy. You only have a certain amount of days, so you will get some duds here and there, but for the most part, everything's well and working. Dude, I'm going to LoopNet, buy me a damn warehouse. Tell you there that. you go. Is that where you live, hey, man? LoopNet. Yeah, yeah, we've uh we've looked on LoopNet a couple times. We almost pulled the trigger on buying one, um, but like I said, we just ended up going in a different avenue. Didn't need all the space and um, kind of just moved back to to where we all started. Right. Brilliant. Hey Jeff, when you find when you find your warehouse, I can get you pallet racking. I got a cousin who deals specifically in that arena, yeah. going to these Amazon facilities, things like that. Um, he'll save you tons of money from from you know from the from the retail side of it for anybody who needs pallet racking. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> pallet racking is uh it's definitely nice in a warehouse. You can double and kind of triple the space you're in depending on how high up your ceilings are. Dude, uh, office space near where I'm at is 10 bucks a year. Not bad. That's why. Office boy. space is typically going to be more expensive than warehousing. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, but it's all it's all area dependent. You know, so where I'm at, it's it's pretty expensive, um, but in other places, you know, you can get it for about 50 cents to a dollar a month. Okay. So about 12 bucks a year. Um, yeah, it just depends. And the more space you get, the cheaper it's going to be, but right. you also have a uh, higher overhead. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Definitely missed the, the warehouse I was in, but uh, I do not miss that rent bill. Yeah, yeah, that's wild, dude. Yeah, that's we like, pay about. Right now, number, I'm like, damn, you must be killing. You must be really killing it if you're paying. Yeah, that right much. now we're paying about two grand a month for the twelve thousand square foot we're in, but family and friends discount. I definitely got really lucky. Um, that's kind of networking. Yeah. It's you kind of. I grew up with this buddy, so it wasn't too hard. But uh, you know, we've networked with people over the years that you know you scratch their back, they'll scratch your back. Yep. So there's yeah. always different, there's other ways to, you know, kind of find these deals. Some, some nice handshake deals can go a long way. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Well, dude, uh, I think that about covers it. Um, yeah. but if anyone has any questions, you know, trying to get into it, feel free to reach out I'm in that group. I'm an open book. I'll tell you where to go. I don't sell a course or anything. If you want to buy a truck load from me, more than welcome to, but I'll, I'll tell you uh, kind of who to look for, where to go. 
to to kind of find this stuff. How do you say your last name? Mahaney. Mahaney. Okay. Yep. Aiden Mahaney. So uh, best place to reach you would be Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, I'm always on there, wheeling the dealing, because um, that's where most of my business is on Facebook. So, and especially doing the side hustle stuff, that's uh, that's where I'm at, family. Yeah, using Facebook for business changed my whole outlook on Facebook. I uh, I don't really use it for much personal stuff anymore, and I don't feel like near as annoyed at uh, social media because I'm like, this is big time yeah. and set. Yep. That's really what it's for. Found a way to kind of make it lucrative, so it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, I appreciate you uh, carving out some time for us. Um yeah, That'll be it for today. And uh, I'll have some, I'll probably have some more questions for you at some point. And um, yep. I'm going to start, uh, yeah, I'm going to start looking around and seeing, seeing what the next move is. There you go. But yeah, if you ever looking for any deals, let me know. Kind of hook you up, put you on something. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Ready, y'all.